Chapter 10, we're talking about flow rates. And what we're going to be talking about is, the, you know, the type of setting you might use on an IV pump to make sure a patient receives a certain amount of medication over a certain period of time. You have to make sure that they get it at a, at a particular rate. Um, you also have to be aware of the tubing you use on an IV because certain types of tube deliver the medicine more quickly than others. Here are some common what we call drop factors. GTT stands for drops. I don't know where the abbreviation came from, but we just have to go with it. In MC, GTT is considered micro drops. Okay, so this would be like, we'll be talking about drops per minute, drops per hour, so on, stuff like that. Okay, so let's look at this first problem. The order is for 200, uh, 2,000 milliliters continuous IV for 24 hours. Find the pump setting in milliliters per hour. Okay, now most flow rates are given in either milliliters per hour or in drops per minute. Okay, to find the flow rate of something, it's always the volume of the amount uh, that we're giving the patient over the amount of time that we are giving the, uh, the medicine to that patient. Okay, so right here, we're supposed to give it in milliliters per hour and we have milliliters and we have hours. So it's really just... Um, a question of, do, of doing the division. Flow rate is volume over time. This is our volume, 2,000 milliliters over the amount of time, 24 hours. I use HR for hours. You can use H if you wish. Now, just do the arithmetic, 2,000 divided by 24 gives me 83.33, so let's say we set this at 83 milliliters per hour. Milliliters per hour, this is the answer we're looking for. Okay, so number two. A patient must receive a, a tube feeding of Ensure 120 milliliters in 90 minutes. Calculate the flow rate in milliliters per hour. Milliliters, milliliters, we're good there, but here we have hours, here we have minutes. Now, I know most of you can look at 90 minutes and know it's an hour and a half, but how do we do it if we don't know that? Because sometimes you're going to be dealing with values you don't know. 90 minutes, let's convert that. We have 60 minutes in one hour. The minutes cancel, so we're going to have hours. If you do... 90 divided by 60, you get 1.5. Okay, so we were supposed to give 120 milliliters in 1.5 hours. So the flow rate is volume, which is 120 milliliters, over time, which is 1.5 hours. Now we don't wanna leave this with the decimal in the bottom, so do 120 divided by 1.5, and you get 80. So the flow rate will be 80 milliliters per hour. Okay, so let's look here. The order is lactated ringers at 167 milliliters per hour for six hours. How many milliliters will the patient receive in six hours? Okay, well, we want to convert six hours into milliliters. Okay. Now the only relationship we have here is 167 milliliters per hour. So if I put this over one, I'm trying to cancel out hours. So I'm going to put one hour in the bottom and then 167 milliliters in the top. Okay. Now the hours cancel. And all we have to do now is to multiply 6 times 167 to get 1,002 milliliters. So how, that is how much that patient should receive in 6 hours total. Okay, so let's look at number 4. The order is for 9% um, saline solution. We don't have to worry about that. This is, you know, a bag you'll go pick up. Um, 500 milliliters 
at 125 milliliters per hour. How long will this infusion take? So this is in hours, so we're actually looking for hours here. Okay, we want to convert 500 milliliters into hours. Now we're gonna use this relationship here. We're wanting to cancel out the milliliters, so I'm going to put 125 milliliters in the bottom and one hour in the top. Now, if you look on the diagonals, milliliters cancel out. So we're going to end up with hours, and really we're going to end up with 500 divided by 125, if I can do it correctly. And you get four. So it will take four hours to, to do this infusion. Okay, number five. The order is um, half strength um, saline solution. We don't have to worry about that. We need 1,000 milliliters at 50 milliliters per hour. If the IV starts at noon on Monday, at what time will it finish? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to figure out how many hours it's going to take to get this thing done, and then we're gonna to have to add it to noon and figure out what time it, it, it works out. So I'm gonna start off with 1,000 milliliters. And I want to convert this into hours so that I know what to add here, okay? My rate is 50 milliliters an hour. So I'm trying to cancel out the milliliters, so I'm gonna put the 50 milliliters in the bottom and one hour in the top. The milliliters cancel out. Our answer is going to be in hours. And we're going to end up with 1,000 divided by 50, which is 20. So it's going to take 20 hours to complete this infusion. So when, what's 20 hours after noon on Monday? Well, the easy way to do that is this is 1,200 hours. We're gonna add 20 hours to it. Remember these two are essentially your minutes. The first two are your hours. So if I take 20 and add to that, I get 3,200. Now we know there are only 24 hours in a day. So we're actually being bumped over to the next day. So we're in Tuesday now. Let's subtract the 24 hours to see where we end up. 32 minus 24 is eight. So this will finish up at 0800 hours Tuesday. Or, you know, you could always count on your fingers, up 20, add 20 hours to noon and see where you get. Okay. All right, 10, six. The order is Sustical, 240 milliliters to infuse over two hours via feeding tube step. We're supposed to calculate the flow rate in milliliters per hour. Well, the flow rate is volume over, hour, uh, over time. So this would be 240 milliliters over two hours, which is 120 milliliters an hour. So that's the answer to that first part. Okay. So let's say you go in after an hour and 30 minutes and there's still 50 milliliters left in the bag. So how would you adjust the flow rate so that the infusion would finish on time? Okay, so we had two hours to get this done. We've used an hour and a half, so we only have an hour, um, a half hour left, right? So we have 0 0.5 hours left. And we have 50 milliliters left to do. Volume over time. So the flow rate would be adjusted to 50 milliliters over 0 0.5 hours. Okay, when you do this calculation, you get 100 milliliters per hour. Okay, so if you came in and realized it was, you, you wanted to end on time and you were a little bit ahead, you, you slow it down a little bit, okay? Now, 
if your facility has a policy that flow rate adjustments must not exceed 20% of the original rate, would this adjustment be permitted? Okay, so early on in the class, we talked about percent increases and percent decreases. And what we look for is the change over the original. Okay, so to find the change, we're going just to subtract. I was at 120 and I changed to 100. So that's going to be a 20, a change of 20. The original flow weight rate was 120. So this is 20 over 120. If you do this arithmetic, you get approximately 0 0.166, which is the same thing as 16.6% you you either multiply it by 100 or just think about moving your decimal place over 2 it should not be the change should not be larger than 20 16.6 .6 is smaller than 20 so yes this would be allowed